definitely be glad to sample your feedback to us the tail end. But this conversation right here is about to be a riveting one because it's about to be about matters, business, SMEs, and everything entrepreneurship that you'd like. But before we get into it, and even the topic of discussion as well, uh, let me just highlight to you. This is from the uh, International Trade Council uh, that talks about Kenyan companies have made uh, significant strides in a global expansion, establishing themselves in various industries and regions and examples in being you know, a, for global expansion. Tell them Trump to running too fast. <laughs> Businesses compete as well as to succeed in the global market with a focus on innovation, quality, sustainability, that this has also helped Kenyan companies as well establish themselves as leaders in various industries worldwide. The success of these companies shows that Kenyan businesses have the potential to become major players in the global economy, driving growth and innovation. Relevant to the conversation you're about to delve into right now, scaling up of African businesses for global impact and maybe what are the potential factors that actually can steer ahead and catalyze this conversation to us that space. And we have an expert with us live in studio who will actually paint for us a wider panoramic view of what pertains to that exactly. He is Maclean Mongolo. He is a finance and business consultant and many other things he does. He's going to tell us in just a bit but Karibu Sana, Mr. Do you prefer McLean or Mr. Mongolo? McLean is okay. Right. McLean Mongolo. McLean is, is a lot okay. of people know you as McLean. Yeah. All right. So briefly, maybe if you can tell us um, just a short journey, okay. shortly, okay. how you got into that space and okay. how far has it been as All of right. now? All right. Um, so thank you so much. First, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate this. Um, yes. Yeah, so um, I, I've, I have... I'm a business, uh, I'm a finance consultant, um, a finance expert. Um, I've, I've, I, I graduated from Strathmore uh, a while back in, um, in, and, 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 and after that I delved into the uh, corporate space. I've worked uh, in finance wing and also managerial spaces uh, for coming close to 10 years. Um, then I, I, I felt the need to delve into uh, uh, the consultancy space because I, I saw there was a gap, there was a serious gap in the market where um, organizations uh, were being run, established, run, uh, but then the, the, there was always a stagnating factor mm -hmm. that would uh, uh, limit them from growing and reaching out to the, the strategies that they, and, and the goals and the plans that have set. And now, with my experience and everything, uh, I, 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 I had a chance to, I was privileged to see uh, the actual uh, uh, nitty gritties that uh, really affect in terms of how we do business in Kenya. Right. And, and, and which is why I, I, deserve, I decided to, to go out of that space, out of that comfortable space. It was really good, but I had to make the sacrifice and, and, and get now into a solo journey. Uh, yeah. Where now I incorporated a company called Lean Business Consulting. Right. Uh, I brought together uh, experts who are like like-minded and and also have experience in different fields and uh, and, and different seg segments, which uh, which now are very crucial to how we do business in uh, right. around here. And um, yeah, and and that's that's what we do. So our our mission is to enhance. Uh, Sustainable growth in uh, of, of businesses in Africa, right. and 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 we've we've put together we've curated services that that are pertinent and are very key to enhance that uh, sustainable growth for right. businesses. Yeah, so we have uh, we've, we've we've looked at uh, different arms of the business, uh, yeah. starting from strategy. So oh, these right. are things which. Uh, these are corporate governance practices which are not being utilized by right. SMEs and startups as they start. Yeah. Um, so, uh, and, and in as much as there are other things such as staffing and all that, but they are very, uh, 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 very key uh, uh, ground levels that uh, you, you need to establish and uh, right. foundations that you need to establish to be able to enhance that growth. So right. we, we, we take them through uh, some of these things like establishing a strategy, how do we, um, we do finance advisory, how do you make sure that you utilize the data, financial data, yeah. Um, in your organization to help you to project the future, to right. help you to uh, uh, 
uh, to to you know to uh, advise and, and and help the management to know where they are at if yeah. they need to drop a, a certain product that mm -hmm. is not doing well if they need to expand to a different market yeah. which one then uh, so they so the data that you have internally is able to help you mm -hmm. to make such decisions so right. we do finance advisory and, and, and for the most part you find that businesses do uh, handle finance in a very historical manner right. um, in a, uh, but we want to come in and, and, and just help them out also just to help them to uh, to be informed of the future yes yeah exactly. so okay. uh, we also mm. do tax advisory uh, right. which is uh -huh. you know uh, tax is very key and there's right. many ways we need to stay compliant in as right. much as we also need to take advantage of um, uh, the different uh, avenues that are presented uh, right. in tax so that we can we okay. can yeah. okay all right okay. before we talk about tax waivers yeah. maybe now let's go back to the conversation about uh, uh, entrepreneurship and then uh, let's delve into maybe startups and SMEs but the topic is scaling so for the purposes of understanding for our dear viewer who's watching maybe if you can just define them a little bit and paint for them a picture what does it mean for a business to scale? I understand the end result is turnover, literally yeah. income. For any person who's learning with a pen and paper right now, if you can explain to them. What is scaling? Exactly, for a business. Yeah, so uh, scaling for a business, um, I'd look at it in different uh, ways. So it's scaling in terms of turnover, or rather mm -hmm. uh, revenue. Right. Um, uh, scaling in terms of revenue, if, if you're right now, you're making uh, uh, a million, uh, a year, uh, then scaling would mean uh, maybe by next year you're making 10 million. So from 1 million to 10 million, that is scaling right. in terms of revenue. There is scaling in terms of uh, uh, market reach. Uh, right. So for instance, you're, you're, you ha you're running a retail shop, um, right. a retail business, and, and you're only in Nairobi. Right. Uh, if you get to a point where you're operating in Nairobi, in Kisumu, Mombasa, in uh, in in, in uh, in Moyale and all those other spaces, then we said that you've scaled in terms of yeah. reach. Yeah. Expansion, Expansion as well. Expansion, yeah. 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 So but also yeah. still maintaining your profit margins as yeah. well. Yeah, yes. Right. Uh, that is very key. Um, there is um, a scaling in terms of the number of uh, services or products that you're offering, right. uh, in terms of your offering now, yeah? So, uh, yeah, if you're only offering one product, say you're only, uh, uh, you're, you're selling, uh, uh, handbags, uh, mm -hmm. and then you you've gotten to a point where now customers are asking for are asking for seats or right. asking for something else. So you can also introduce that you also scale in terms of mm -hmm. your service offering or product Expansion. offering. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so yeah, so scaling is basically growth. Right. Um, so you want to put it in terms of expansion, or mm. it's, it's 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 growth. Right. So yeah. Um, so that's what scaling right. is about. Right. Um, yeah. And and yeah. So Definitely, and I know you've gotten that part. But also, I believe in a business class, if somebody was to be in an entrepreneurship class, and mm. definitely this is a this is like a lecture, by the way. So mm. if you are a business uh, student, uh, uh, tune in and come close to your TV. If you are to uh, maybe contrast between uh, profit and uh, uh, scaling, maybe if you were just if you were to maybe like give just like two differences between profit and scaling, okay. but because I understand they can be confusing yeah. and they could be rather similar in some yeah. sort of way. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that's, a very, that's a very good question, yeah. Um, so, scaling, uh, we've defined as growth. Right. Uh, profit, on the other hand, is um, the, the, the money, the, the residual money, right. uh, so to speak, uh, that you're left with as a business owner right. um, after doing everything that pertains your business, yeah. Right. So, let's say, for instance, you are selling these seats Mm -hmm. And uh, you've sold the seats at uh, uh, hundred thousand shillings, yeah. Right. And um, uh, for you to so sell the seats, you had to buy the fabric, you had to do uh, in car transportation costs, you had to get uh, fundies to come and you know, you know uh, make the actual seat, and that has costed you, let's say, uh, eighty thousand shillings. Right. Right. So mm -hmm. what then ends up, you end up with 20,000 shillings, isn't it, as right. that difference, which is now the profit. Right. That's now what we call the profit. Mm -hmm. So, and, and that's, that's a very important question because uh, mm -hmm. for the most part, 
so there's profit and loss. Right. And, for, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, and, and, and sometimes you can make a profit, sometimes you can make a loss. Mm -hmm. So uh, in as much as you, you're selling that seat for 100,000, mm -hmm. sometimes you find yourself that uh, if you put together the labor that you've paid to yeah. the fundies, if you, look at the, um, if you look at the transport costs, if you look at the fabrics that you've had to, board, to mm -hmm. buy and everything, you yeah. maybe have spent about 120,000. Right. So you end up what? Losing, you, ha you end up uh, losing or incurring a loss of 20,000 shillings. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, so profit is a very uh, important uh, element of it and how you, you, um, you attain to a state where you're, getting, you're earning profits is also very important and it, mm -hmm. it's, it's not what we're talking about here, right. mm -hmm. that it's, it's all about uh, how you're doing business. Mm -hmm. um, how like are you the managing the finances. nature of your operations? Right? Yeah, yeah. Also the culture, the of, culture of the business of, setting. Of the yeah. business setting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You, you'd find uh, maybe some some for you to do that sell. Go back to that example. Right. For you make that sell of a hundred thousand. Maybe you had to get a loan of uh, maybe uh, fifty thousand shillings. Yeah. Right. Or let's say eighty eighty thousand shillings, which was the actual cost of it. But okay. then you had you are falling back on rent, and you had to mm. use that money to pay your own right. personal expenses, which is a bad idea. Which is a very bad idea. Yeah. It's mm. a very bad way of doing business. Mm -hmm. uh, so those are some of the uh, uh, challenges that uh, are in doing business, right. and and um, your so uh, you end up uh, skyrocketing your expenses. Yes. Um, and when you skyrocket your expenses, you end up uh, 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 going into losses. Now, the right. other thing is it's budgeting. Yeah, you need yes. to before getting into a project, yeah. um, uh, before starting to utilize your money, you need to have a very strong budget. You know, uh, mm -hmm. this is what you project to be the expenses, and yes. and this is the margin or the profit that you're gonna make out of it. Right. And then now you have need to have the discipline or the systems and structures to right. be able to follow through that budget right. up until completion. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Interesting. Thank yes. you for that uh, yeah. comprehensive explanation. Now let's come back to your startups uh, yeah. from where you sit, startups and uh, SMEs in general, from where you sit and yeah. in your expertise experience yeah. or yeah, a third eye. <laughs> from yeah. what you've observed so far yeah. in terms of the whole ecosystem surrounding the operations, especially currently right now in our country, yeah. how, how is it if you were to maybe explain this to maybe a forum? If you are to give a report to a mm. forum, how is the nature of operations? And maybe what are some of the, let's say, uh, recorded successes mm. and maybe just a little bit of stagnations in there? Okay, in terms of startups? Yes. All right. Um, first, I want to recognize, I think there's been a lot of efforts towards um, um, supporting startups mm -hmm. uh, in the country. Um, which is a very good thing. There are a lot of forums that are coming up. There is a lot of uh, engagements and discussions mm -hmm. around which, uh, you know, uh, uh, people with ideas or young people just come, uh, are being assisted in terms of resources, in terms of, uh, you know, uh, uh, a consultancy. Uh, so there is that um, assistance which is there at the moment, which is a very good thing. Um, uh, well, and where we are at at this point, uh, I'd, say, I'd say we're in a good space. Um, looking back from uh, maybe 10 years from now, uh, yeah. the startup say, ecosystem. Maybe you can explain from pre-COVID pre and then post-COVID. Post-COVID, yes. great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, yeah, well, uh, pre-COVID, um, um, I'd say the startup ecosystem was was uh, the 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 amount of uh, steps that we've taken so far mm -hmm. uh, we're in a much better space according uh, uh, in relation to pre-covid uh, i think uh, back then there was not um, uh, so much uh, innovation right. um in innovative efforts that uh, that that uh, that were being uh, ch uh, you know uh, channeled, uh, channeled to the space yeah uh, mm -hmm. to the okay. space mm -hmm. uh, but we see after COVID and which uh, I think also COVID played a role right. is that there's been a, a change in mindset. Yeah. And uh, I think also just because of many people losing jobs and, right. uh, and, and, and uh, uh, many companies like closing down. Mm -hmm. So yeah. people have had to uh, 
start to think differently. Yeah? Right. And mm -hmm. so we see now there's been uh, a lot more conversations around startups yes. and, 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 and a lot of startups also coming up and new products and new, um, and new uh, 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 businesses or even uh, industries are coming up. Right. So I think there's a, there's, there's, there's a, there's a shift, which right. is a good thing, um, but there is also active need for stewardship Right. and support of that uh, even as uh, as that goes on because we, we there's this ideology that uh, mm -hmm. um, uh, that uh, businesses in Kenya and just uh, just uh, third world countries don't right. uh, don't see their 13th month uh, mm -hmm. in between mm -hmm. 12 months somewhere somehow it uh, the, the vision dies down nice. or mm -hmm. there's lack of you know funds to keep on running it or there right. is um, sustainability yeah there's, there's mm -hmm. that lack of sustainability mm -hmm. so so having knowledge of that there is also need for um, a very strong ecosystem right yeah to be able to support these startups and it uh, also paints it also trickles down to even our government uh, yeah. uh, how are they what is the role they are playing in yeah. ensuring that that community is thriving? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Uh, the, yeah, the government has a very uh, key role as well. Um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, but also, it, um, I think it, 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 has, it has done quite a bit of uh, work. I know, you know most of the time we want to talk about the government. We, yeah. Uh, we <laughs> <laughs> you know, we taxes and yeah, use taxes taxation, and, and regulation, yeah, yeah, and yeah. all those many other things in there. Yeah. Yes. Um, 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 there is uh, there is something they call uh, a special economic uh, zone for for services, mm -hmm. and you can check mm -hmm. this out. Um, okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. there is uh, there is uh, there is a space that they're opening up at Two Rivers, and right. I believe it's by the Ministry of Trade and 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 and, and, and some other players, right. uh, where they are giving. Uh, incentives to startups mm -hmm. being in the special economic zone within right. uh, in as much as you're offering services you're given a uh, uh, much uh, uh, lower taxes yeah. or in a period of 10 years and, and there's many other incentives that and support that comes along with um, yeah. uh, so SEZ uh, special economic zones have been there but it's mostly been in manufacturing industry right and um, it's a good thing that now they've up opened it up to also the service industry. Uh, right. So it's a, it's the, the opportunities that are opening up. Uh, mm -hmm. The government um, is, is making um, uh, good steps mm -hmm. uh, towards it. Um, right. and, and, and I think for me, I think there is a lot of uh, work that can be done. Mm -hmm. in the private sector as well. In as right. much as we, we would want to uh, uh, rely on the government a lot, but there is, there is, there is a lot of um, uh, steps that we can take even in the private sector. Right. Um, yes, the government is, can, can create, uh, um, create platforms for right. us. Mm -hmm. um, the biggest thing you can do is, uh, you know, make legislations uh, that will uh, ease, ease the business, uh, the, the, the way we do business, or create an environment in terms of, you know, peace. Right. Um, uh, political climate needs to be good, it needs to be welcoming for um, investors, foreign investors to come in. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's th that that uh, environment that they, mm -hmm. I think, feel like the government, that's the part they play mm -hmm. very well. Okay. Um, in as much as, uh, aside from that, uh, the private sector also needs to come in mm -hmm. and also create, uh, uh, create now, uh, so, 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 so say forums or just to enhance that ecosystem. Yeah, or uh, just collaborate and partner, collaborate in short, partner and just and create that open. Uh, interaction so that uh, it's seamless in exactly. terms of operation, exactly. which is a very good thing. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, let's maybe also get back to capital because yeah. every startup needs capital. Yeah. And then also for the purposes of understanding what is a startup, what is an SME, so that we just get clear that we can move to how can even our local businesses scale up to international spaces as well. Yeah. Mm. So shortly, just startups, define what startups for purposes of understanding okay. and SMEs as well. Then we can delve further into it. Okay. So a startup is um, is the very initial stage uh, of a business. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're just figuring it, you're putting yourself together uh, in terms of uh, value offering uh, and also uh, where you want to penetrate. Mm -hmm. 
Right. Uh, so it's very initial stages of a business. Right. Uh, an SME is one that has already made a couple of miles uh, right. in the market. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so there is criteria in terms of number of employees. There is criteria in terms of uh, 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 revenue. Uh, yeah. So, but uh, for I think to make it simple, uh, startup is very initial stages, right. and SME is one that has already gone into market and made uh, uh, steps into. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, now, for like you said, uh, for any business actually to uh, grow and expand, uh, like you said, uh, pre-COVID and now post-COVID, tech has really played a huge role in terms yeah. of even adaptations. And I understand there's even uh, businesses that are slow to adapting to the current trends on the market yeah. and even just the, the whole uh, ecosystem or the, the whole environment of operation yeah. in terms of also innovations as well and you mentioned the stories as uh, the, the culture and also the size of the business so maybe if you could just paint for us a little picture of how has tech uh, played a role in maybe catalyzing or advancing operations in the SME and startup sector yeah um, uh, tech is one of the biggest um, um, enablers of, of growth um, in startups and uh, the business ecosystem mm -hmm. um, uh, one thing is automation of processes and systems. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, uh, so they, it brings a lot of efficiency in how we do our normal uh, our day to day tasks. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's it's been it's it's opened up uh, our our reach. Right. So once you, once you, for instance, you get an, uh, you you get into e-commerce, right. uh, you have a wider audience. Uh, you're able to sell your services not only in Kenya but in Uganda, Tanzania, mm. in in in, right. in Asia. In uh, in you can you have a wider audience. Right. So that's the other uh, bit that as as you know that as as. as Played part. Uh, there's a lot of uh, efficiency in terms of payments. I think there's a lot of payment systems that uh, have come up. Mm -hmm. um, you know, going way back to M-Pesa, just making it easy for people to do business. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, if you want to, if you want to buy a ticket to an event, you can just buy it off your off of your phone and get every detail that you need. Uh, you don't have to make a co phone call. So there's a bit, there's, there's, uh, there's an ease of doing business that yeah. comes with technology ad uh, advancement or adaptation. Um, it's a very good thing. Mm -hmm. And I feel uh, businesses really need to adopt tech. Right. Um, it's, it's, it's what is, it's, it's now what we need to all uh, get into that space. Um, there's, there's a lot of advances as well. Um, I think the more we get into it, the more even even in African setup we'll be able mm -hmm. to see how best can we take advantage of this because so far we've yeah. just we're just adopting the advances that are coming off of yeah. uh, the uh, the latest you know innovations yes the latest yeah. we hear about and now we have things like AI taking yeah. over and yeah. also they're playing a huge role by the way yes. especially in education and the medical sector stories like e-learning and yes. the rest or machine learning rather as well yeah yeah Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's, yeah, they they are they are changing the whole uh, dynamic. game, the mm -hmm. whole dynamic, right. and um, yeah, it's it's we we had better get into get into it earlier on rather than right. later, mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. it be uh, it becomes way too advanced for us to catch up. But yeah. I think we're making good steps. Uh, right. There is there is a lot of um, I mean the government mentioned the government. The government also has done a, a very good thing. When you know when you leave when you leave the country, that's when you understand that yes. oh, we stand uh -huh. a privilege because things like internet access, right. it's a very key thing. Yeah, and uh, right. for us, I think the government has done a very good job uh, in terms yeah. of infrastructure right. uh, for internet access. Mm -hmm. um, now, when you talk about tech internet uh, it's, it's it's the pillar right it's because when you get to these other countries they one of the reasons why they're not able to advance in as much as uh, as, as much as we are it's because of such uh, infrastructural gaps right yeah um so so yeah um, um, i think uh, that that's, right. that's the place that yeah right uh, thank you thank you for that thank you for that now when you talk about now uh, scaling globally uh, i believe I believe I think Shubi Safaricom, Shubi Safaricom, uh, one of the biggest telcos we have in Kenya that has managed to scale internationally or rather even globally because yeah. uh, you can be in the U.S. and still be able to send money to Kenya, to a business, even to your loved ones as well. Yes. 
um, I was just thinking and trying to wrap my mind around it. Maybe what could have, could have been some of the measures or some of the factors that you know pushed Safaricom to scale to such a big space where it's internationally r recognized. And for example, that company that's also trying to like maybe also venture towards that trajectory, maybe what are the things they're not doing that maybe are preventing them from scaling globally? And what are the things that Safaricom possibly could have done that made it scale globally? If you can just briefly discuss that. Okay. So one, one of the things that uh, really helped them was uh, capital, right. just access to capital for them to do such volumes of uh, uh, such magnitude of work, you need a lot of capital. So access to capital is one of them. Uh, two, um, there is uh, governance issues. Right. Um, so how are you structured internally? How are you, uh, how are you making sure that the team is able to collaborate and work efficiently? Uh, how are you able to manage tasks um, I need to, if uh, you know, if I'm a customer service, I need to know exactly what I'm doing. I need to be trained. So there's cap issues to do with capacity building. Um, yeah, there's issue, issues to do with structure, um, uh, internal structures uh, that ca enable that uh, sort of growth. Yeah. Um, um, these, yeah, these. So the skill set is also very uh, key and important. Uh, for you to give a, a top tier service, you need top tier uh, brains. You need top tier expertise to be able to serve that. Um, yeah. So I think uh, in as uh, the capacity building element is very key, but also trying to make sure that you find uh, a very uh, best fit. Uh, right players to, to, to be part of your team. It's, yeah. it's also a very important uh, part. Right. Yes, yeah, so I think such things and also just partnership. Right. Uh, partnership with global players uh, yeah. for you to access their markets, for you to access their infrastructure, right. to, you, yeah, to, for you to, to gain audience. Um, right. Yeah, so those, things, those are some of the things that... Um, um, right. There are factors that actually have managed to help yes, that. Yes. And I think uh, I also understand Safaricom has even managed to also partner with PayPal. And I think also Equity Bank. Equity yeah. Bank is also one of the biggest uh, uh, industries yeah. that has managed to scale globally and partner with PayPal as well. Yes. I think we have also a Java House. Yes, Java yes. House has almost branches everywhere in the country, including yeah. China as well and yes. here in Kenya as well. Uh -huh. And many others, I think also including Chandaria. Chandaria or Chandarana? Chandaria, Chandaria yeah. yes, yeah. Uh, one of the best examples here that we have in Kenya so far. So yes. good, right? Um, some of these uh, organizations have, have uh, adopted uh, back to to now structures and governance and all that. Mm -hmm. uh, have adopted, uh, especially when you look at retail, uh, yeah. a franchise model. Right. Uh, so a franchise model it helps you replicate uh, uh, the business that you're operating right now in any space that you want to. So right. it's clearly uh, um, stipulated every single thing that uh, every staff is supposed to do right. uh, uh, within the timelines, uh, you know, and there's also KPIs and there's also ways to monitor and improve such services. So right. there is there's a whole manual that right. is normally prepared and, and it's just uh, uh, given and, and put to play. Right. So having such a structure, having such a system in place, it's, mm -hmm. it's easier for you to then scale up right yeah and, and those spread. are some of the things yeah, yeah. so that's those are mm -hmm. some of the things that uh, right. um, we need to adopt right from your observation and your learning maybe if you can briefly maybe explain if you were to uh, give uh, a short uh, description to just the nature of the global markets and, and the behavior. I believe also for us to also attain that space where we are able to extend further to and even tap into other countries, including the China I've mentioned and the USA, mm -hmm. I believe we should be exporting services, right? Yes. So I believe uh, the export sector plays a huge role in yeah. also scaling. Yeah. So briefly, if you can talk about that, how is the nature of yeah. the international space yeah. or global space? Yeah. Right. Um, I, I, Look, um, and this is just how God uh, designed the whole world. Yeah, right. there's resources everywhere, and there is um, there is a part that we play each and every one of us. So it's one of the things is very important for us to uh, to to understand where we are at, to understand what resources we have, what yeah. makes us unique, and mm -hmm. what can we offer to the whole world. 
Right. So, uh, for instance, uh, the Chinese, in as much as they're selling to us um, devices and you know all these uh, equipment, mm -hmm. it's so easy for them to create on the other side because they have they have one the manpower, they right. have resources. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that also they would need from us. Right. Um, so what would they need from us? Yeah. So yeah. there's things that we can also export to them. Right. Um, there's um, and it goes back to a production process right yes, here, like exactly. you mentioned. Yeah. Yeah. So there's mm -hmm. things like crabs, um, those things that uh, some of us don't even you know don't even consume that much, but they are yeah. in plenty in right. our country. So um, so we need to identify what our strengths. Right. And what are the needs out there, and, and mm -hmm. just so there and, and and supply to that demand, there mm -hmm. is there is a lot of opportunities if you ask me, yeah, right. in terms mm -hmm. of export, mm -hmm. and that's only um, uh, you know pertaining. Um, that's what I've mentioned only, but um, there is in terms of services also there is uh, opportunities that we can take advantage of because if you just look around uh, East Africa. Right. There is. Um, we're talk right now. We're talking about businesses. There are right. businesses that are struggling in in Tanzania. There's a businesses that are struggling in Uganda. How yeah. can we reach out to them in South Sudan? How can we reach out to them? How can right. we um, enable those ecosystems also to that way we are exporting the service as well. Right. So uh, I think in when you talk about uh, increasing the volumes of export, right, we need to identify what are what are the opportunities that you know what are the resources we have and what are right. the opportunities that are out there there's mm -hmm. there's a lot of opportunities to take advantage of right if we take ad that approach i think we can be able yes. to seize so many of them right now for a company already or maybe an uh, already established operation that's already working in that space maybe how can they also expand their profit margins um okay so uh, expansion of profits uh, uh it, or this stretching. I think the other word is stretching their profit margins. It's, it's stretch well. their profits, mm -hmm. uh, or rather grow. Um, yeah. So these 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 different ways. Yeah. Uh, and it also depends on uh, what your what's your business, how you're operating your business. For instance, if you're in retail and uh, you're operating a physical uh, supermarket in Nairobi, right. you can only have access to the the people within the Nairobi region. Right. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, and maybe some people who will be passing by Nairobi, but uh, but entirely just the people who are within your with people who are within your region, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so if we look at uh, expansion in that way, if we focus to just operate in the Nairobi, that one shop in mm -hmm. Nairobi, mm -hmm. you have a we have a cup, right? There's you have a ceiling rather. Yeah. There's only so much you can get to. Right. So, so then now scaling up in that sense, that mm. means that you need to. You uh, need to break barriers, to literally. Break barriers. Yeah. yeah. Because it's like you've been hindered. Exactly. Yeah. One of the um, ways is to adopt e-commerce. Right. Because e-commerce uh, mm -hmm. exposes you to a wider market. You can be able to sell to someone in in Ki, in, in in Kijabe, right. uh, and you know, and and and, trans and transport your goods all, all the way to that place. Mm -hmm. So there's different ways to look at it. I think it's different for different uh, industries. Yeah. Uh, if it's services, services, um, it's it's a lot easier to operate in the different markets. Right. And yeah, so I think it, it, it's different cases for different industries. Right. Yeah. I'm being told they have to wind up, but <laughs> there's a lot so much to actually put at the table. And the finally, before you tell us uh, what you're conducting uh, uh, very soon, coming up yeah. shortly, mm -hmm. maybe uh, just. To summarize on that part, maybe some of the hindrance blocks that can uh, prevent uh, a business from scaling globally. I understand there's things like bottlenecks, uh, trade embargoes, yeah. and uh, the rest. Even red tamping, right? Yes. yes. Yeah, maybe uh, just one, if you were to explain maybe to uh, a person who is watching right now. Just one, and then you can tell us. Okay, the things that... Uh, yeah, uh, blocking us to blocking scale us to international. Scale. Yes. Um, okay, so for me, I'd, I'd, I'd like to mention the mentality. The right. business mindset. Mm -hmm. um, I think we need to change the business mindset. One of the one of the, one of the speakers said, um, uh, "For you to, for you to, uh, to 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 grow, you need to have the mentality to grow." Right. Yeah. So, uh, for if you're only thinking that this is enough for you, and right. uh, so then you will always be there. You right. won't see opportunities to scale up. So I think mm. first 
begins with a change of mindset, a uh, mm. change of mentality. You need to establish goals for yourself right. and say that this year I need to get to one million uh, mm. USD by revenue. Right. Uh, and so then when you start from there, you can mm. now begin to look for opportunities on how to get there. Right. The thing, uh, that's one of the things, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. one, one of the key things, so I'm just going to mention space. one. All right, yeah, just one. Yeah. Now, I, I understand you have a forum coming up on 22nd of March, uh, that is yeah. next month. Maybe you can tell us, just shortly, in, I think in, in less than a minute, in okay. the camera, where people can get to maybe participate. I understand it's a community of just think tanks coming up together to give insights on how to go the way forward in terms of business and auto on actually literally entrepreneurship yes. in less than one minute okay <laughs> right uh, on the 22nd of march we're gonna have um, a, a forum called gda forum uh it's a, it's a forum happening it's a dinner that we've arranged it's happening from 5 p.m at the at the Morgan peak residence here in Nairobi. Uh, so we're bringing together uh, experts and, and, and key players in the different industries. We're having banks, we are having uh, representatives from NSCs and other industries. Uh, and they're going to, we're gonna come together as a co collaborative effort to speak about the, some of the pertinent issues that uh, are facing us, the, the entrepreneurial ecosystem in the country. And we, 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 we opt to come out of that with, with a well laid out model or plan on how to enhance entrepreneurship in the country and, and all that. Uh, yes. For anyone who wants to participate, is there an email or a booking? You can yes. just give it very fast, shortly, as yes. we go. Uh, please, please get in touch with us uh, at growdevelopafrica.org. And uh, you'll find every detail there. Uh, you can get TKL sales go, go at uh, 4,000 for Alibad. Uh -huh. That's ending at, at on the 5th of, of, of March. So you, right. need to, you need to hurry up. Uh, we are also offering um, an offer to right. anyone who is within our audience uh, mm -hmm. to use the to use the tagline lean l e a n if you use that tagline to purchase mm. the ticket you can get a 500 shillings discount off of the right. ticket sales right. yeah all right hurry while tickets are still yeah. being sold right now so alibats will still get the discounts right yeah alibats you get a discounts uh -huh. um and so we need to make sure that you buy before 5th of march all right yeah before after that is going to be 4500 all right, you know what to do. Thank you so much, uh, McLean Mongolo, for sharing your insights. We definitely have to go. Thank you. This has been a riveting conversation, and I think we were just a quarter into it. Yeah. Right, we'll definitely invite you next time. And we take a break shortly. Stefan is going to be coming up with an interesting conversation as well, just to uh, literally extend further on what we have been talking about right here at Y244 Channel and at Brian Circle 101. We take a break. We come back with much more. Stick around. Mm -hmm.